Hey everyone, welcome to my weekly vlog, episode two. As promised, I'm going to try to do these uh, on a weekly basis, uh, try to get them uploaded on every Monday of the week. So um, here we are, episode two. I'm trying to hold hold myself to my word here. Um, so welcome. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, basically, I'm just here to kind of give a, a rundown on my week and just talk about all sorts of things that are going on in my life and uh, comments on things that have happened and maybe some predictions on, you know, what's, what's upcoming in my world and what have you. So uh, lots of things to, to discuss. It's been a busy week. Um, the first thing, if you didn't catch my episode one from last week, uh, last Friday, a Tracy, uh, well, Tracy Lawrence, uh, country singer Tracy Lawrence, uh, released a new live album, his first one since, uh, I believe, 1995. So it's a big deal, um, which I play drums on. And uh, so super excited to, to check that out. I, I stayed up. Uh, late Thursday night, past midnight, so that I could uh, stream it, and I listened to it through. So I've listened to it twice now. Once through headphones with uh, just Apple, my Apple AirPods. Uh, these aren't the pro versions. These are just the, the cheap versions you can get, but um, they still sound good. And, um, and I'd listened to it again, um, earlier today before I turned this camera on, uh, through, through the monitor speakers and just sat here and just absorbed the, you know, everything about it, the mix, the playing, different parts, what have you. So, uh, some takeaways that I wrote down, uh, from just listening to it twice now. Um, the first thing is that I'm happy to say it sounds like me playing the drums. Um, it's definitely me. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't, um, they didn't replace me. They didn't use any machines. Um, in fact, there's even one, there's one song where I'm counting off where you can actually hear my voice. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, even cooler that they didn't use any drum replacement that I can tell. The drums sound like my drums. The snare drum, the toms, um, they easily could have, you know, replaced any of the drums at any point. And they may, I mean, I don't know, there's a few rim click, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rim click in, in the show and, um, it sounds great on the record. I don't know if it's, you know, if they enhance that or not, but it, it sounds like my rim click. So if they did replace it, it sounds great. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, as the record goes on and as the show goes on, I can sort of hear myself taking more chances and risks. Um, and as well as, I mean, the, the music sort of lends itself to that. There's a few songs that are a little more rock and a little more, you go, you're going for it kind of thing. So, uh, it's, it's a fun listen because, you know, if I feel like, you know, the show kind of just keeps ramping up as it, as it goes on. So if you listen to the, to the album in song order, that, that is the, the order in which we played those songs at the show. So um, I think it's a good it's a good playlist. It's a good it's a good set, if you will. So uh, it just in general, I'm I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm really happy with the mix overall. The drums sound great. They're they're mixed in um, what you call like audience perspective. So in other words, the hi hat is on the right side. In the as I travel uh, playing the drums descending you can hear the drums descending from right to left um, and 
you can you know the, the stereo imaging of the kit sounds great you can really you really hear the hat on the right side and you really hear like the low floor toms and you can tell which crash i'm hitting just by the stereo imaging alone so uh it's pretty cool um obviously it's a great band you know we were really tight we had we had been playing shows for quite a long time um up to that point and um I really love the cymbal sound on on the record. Um, you know, Istanbul Agop, of course. I mean, they're, they're awesome cymbals to start with. So, you know, but the, but the the cymbal sound, wow, really stands out. Especially the hi hats. Those um, those hi hats that I used on the record are 15 inch traditional light hats, and they just wow, they sit in the mix so perfectly. Um, so yeah, uh, Tracy's voice sounds huge, of course. And I, I texted him, uh, on release day and just congratulated him. And I told him, I said, your voice sounds huge, you know, and, you know, just super grateful. So yeah, um, I, if I was going to pick a favorite song off the record, I'd have to say front porch, um, would be my favorite just because, of the groove and the pocket and it's just it's just what a great song and and just it just feels so good every the whole band is just gelling on front porch and it just just a great country vibe on that tune um moving along uh the let's see so later friday night i had a gig a a show with my own band milestones tribute to miles davis we played at rudy's jazz room here in nashville and i'm so happy to say and i found out when we got to the venue that it was sold out so we played to a sold out audience friday night and the audience stayed for the whole show pretty much the all you know the whole two and a half hours or whatever it was that we were playing I'm so happy to report and what a fun, fun night it was and what a fun audience it was to play for because they were, they were really into it. Um, it was it was just great to play all that music again, the Miles Davis music. Um, sometimes, you know, weeks and months go by and I forget how much fun it really is. So, yeah. Um we debuted a new song that I had arranged. Uh, it was kind of fun because the new song is, isn't is from like the sort of classic era of Miles Davis. This, this song was, it's called Jean-Pierre, and it was uh, recorded in the 80s. The Miles, so 80s era Miles Davis. And I had Andrew bring his electric bass, and it was just fun and made it different and just kind of just a just another kind of turn in the set and it'll be nice being able to have that to call on when we need it as a as a sort of a game changer if you will um if things are ever feeling stale which they never have but just you know, if you just want to make a like a turn, or maybe if there's a, ever a request for something more modern uh, that Miles recorded, now I have that as well. So I'm glad I did that. A lot more tunes that I want to arrange and transcribe. Um, uh, one of them is Billy Bob. One of them is Two Bass Hit, which I've already started. Um, those are both from the Milestones record. And there was one other one. Too. Oh, um, Gingerbread Boy. Uh, that's another one that I want to start working on. So, got my work cut out for me. Um, if anyone's wondering, I use Sibelius to arrange and write out all the parts. I write first. I write out the score, and then I, you know, create the parts and. Um, it's a labor of love. It's it takes. It's very time consuming and it's it's not easy. Um, and sometimes it's hard because you're you know the band 
the arrangements are such that it's hard to put into like onto paper, if you will, like what's happening. Um, so, you know, it presents challenges sometimes just to, to put it down on paper and to say, here, this is what's supposed to happen. So uh, we end up talking about it in rehearsal and that kind of thing. But yeah, for the most part, you can write it down and transcribe it and your point comes across. Um, I tried to get video footage of the show and I brought my camera and I have this great um, mount that's that goes on microphone stands. And, you know, I looked everywhere backstage at the club and could not find an extra mic stand to put the camera on. And, I, you know, we were really kind of pressed for time. Uh, with the setup and sound check and in really lack of sound check um, and the sound guy, I felt like he wanted us to start. And so I didn't ask him, but I should have because almost immediately, as soon as we started playing and I look over to my right side and I'm, Andrew's over here playing bass on my right side and I look past Andrew and over there in the corner behind the piano are a whole bunch of mic stands just piled up leaning up against the corner and I was like shucks so I didn't actually get any video footage of the show but um, they do record there they multi-track at Rudy's as well as they have um, some camera options so I'm looking into possibly uh, just purchasing from them the multi-tracks and the whatever camera angles they got I don't know but um pretty cheap they they offer all that for 50 bucks so pretty good deal um if you have a good show for 50 bucks you can get it get the whole thing multi-tracked and, and videoed uh so that's that's a very very cool option so i'm i'm looking into that right now um so yeah hopefully i'll have that in my possession by the, the end of the week um some more takeaways just from the milestone show. I, I really feel like my playing is really, you know, it's, it's refining. Um, you know, I've been home this year off the road, so I've had a lot more time to practice and focus on some of the, the my weaknesses, um, in playing and, you know, I mean, and I'll say like one of the, one of my weaknesses has been like, my left foot and just independence um, and really my feet in general, like my independence when incorporating my feet into both grooves and um, soloing and especially stuff where both feet are coming together. Um, something I noticed that's really, really hard for me and maybe is for you too as drummers, but um, if you play, imagine you're playing doubles, um, imagine you're playing like, like kick, kick, right, right, kick, kick, right, right, kick, kick, right, right. But you're playing hi-hat on quarter notes. So you're going, I can't like, I can't sing it and like, but imagine you're going like, like, but like the hi-hat is coming down on the, on the first double. And I'll, I might make some videos of this in the, in my Patreon, but um, just to describe in more detail what I'm doing at the drum kit. Um, but I found there's just stuff like that. There's just little holes in my playing that I'm discovering, that I'm working on, um, just trying to bridge those gaps and um, all sorts of exercises, independence exercises that I've been working on. And I feel like, um, you know, it, it's, it's helping me. It's, it's, it's coming together. So that's a good feeling. Um, this, well, uh, the other day, a few days ago, I was working on a new song for, um, a guitarist who lives here in town. He's a real great, uh, YouTube sensation. His name is Tyler Larson, but, you might know him as Music is Win on YouTube. Um, he's a guitar shredder, awesome guitarist, super nice guy. 
and I've done some work with him before on other recordings of his. Uh, so he's asked me to to record drums for this new song of his, and he sent he sent me uh, you know the parts to play to, which is just I think it's just like a, a guitar and bass part. But um, so I loaded that up in Logic and I I played it a few times and played a few different versions of it and sent it to him and said, hey, what do you, you know, here's like version one. What do you think? And then he got back to me and he was like, oh, didn't you listen to the the version I sent to you, to you with drums on it? And I was like, no, nah, like I didn't get a version of drums. <laughs> like, turns out he had sent the version with drums on it before like in a in a text and i somehow just missed it i thought it was like the same rec- i thought he had sent the same thing twice basically is what it was so i didn't listen to the drum version that he had programmed some drums on it that he you know it was like in a halftime kind of feel <laughs> so i was playing like regular time but the the de- the demos in halftime and so now i've got to go back and recut the drum parts like to match up where the halftime is on his on his demo so that's what I'm, i'll be working on this week i've got the the tama uh walnut birch drum kit um set back up and all mic'd up um something i did that is a little bit uh that will be new is I inst- I had a another well this, so I got this drum kit about a year ago and <laughs> it's crazy like I haven't this drum set since I brought it home it hasn't left the house I haven't played any gigs on it and I don't know if I'm gonna actually but just because I want to keep it like in the studio and just keep it nice but um, I bought a, a Kelly shoe with a with a Shure Beta ninety one microphone one of those boundary mics. And I finally installed it. I've had this thing sitting around for like, I don't know, almost a year now. And um, so I finally installed it last night uh, before I set the kit up. And so I'm excited to try that out just because, you know, it'll be a great mic to use. It would be a nice option to have. Uh, for for a different sort of kick sound, you know, the the Beta ninety one has a really nice slap uh, sound on it. it. Has a very very articulate sound, but it's got also got a good amount of low end too. Of course, I've got the the, the sub kick on. The, I don't know if you can see that there, but um, yeah. So I'll be using that microphone um, for this for this session just to get that real contemporary sound out of the kick drum um and it's funny because like when i after installing the the kelly shoe which by the way i totally recommend kelly shoe like the 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 mounting system is so spectacular i've had one installed in my road uh kit my other thomas R classic maple kit um i've had it installed since 2015 it's been like on all it's been all around the country multiple multiple times and on the road and just on every gig I've done almost uh, that would require that kit. And, um, you know, I've never had to even like adjust it. It's been, it's, it's just, it's like those things are awesome. So I highly recommend those, uh, the Kelly shoe. I got the sticker right here from the packaging. So, yeah. Um, and also, um, Jeff, the owner is, you know, he's a super nice guy and, um, you know, it's all him. It's just him working out of his home, making all these all himself. So it's, it's really mom and pop kind of organization. And he's just a really great dude, uh, based around the Omaha area. So yeah. Uh, what else? So, oh, so right. So I got this kit set up and, um, you know, uh, I had been using my Canopus BB uh, Black Beauty snare drum for the first iteration of, of that song. But um, it just on listening back, and I was compare, I was listening to some Gavin Harrison yesterday on, 
on YouTube and just different recordings that that uh, he's played on and different live stuff that he's on. Not live, but like studio stuff where he's on YouTube where his drums are featured prominently. And I was listening to his snare tone and it's, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. And like, that's the tone that I really want for this song. So I'm going to swap out that, um, that Black Beauty Canopus uh, for, uh, I have a Canopus Yaiba Birch. And so I'm going to try that tomorrow on the session and see if I can get closer to that Gavin Harrison snare tone. Um, there's something that's just so warm and like it pops and like there's a crack to it. It's, it's not like a huge long tone, but like, uh, it's just so like right there and yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to describe. It's hard to put that into words, but just go listen to some Gavin Harrison and check out his snare tone. Um, really, really amazing snare. I mean, his drum sound is just so fabulous. It's I, if I can get my drums to sound anything like that, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on there. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, geez, what else do I want to talk about? So, oh yeah, well, so so check out Music is Win on YouTube. You'll be, I mean, his videos are so freaking awesome. His editing skills, the way he talks to the camera, the way he's got all sorts of like, you know, great, great skills, um, both musical and film. So check him out. Um, Tyler Larson, Music is Win. All right. Uh, today was Mother's Day, and so we kind of had a family day today. I, I I didn't do any work in here at all um, today. We went out for lunch. My wife wanted dim sum for lunch, so since it's Mother's Day, she got dim sum for lunch, and um, we all had a nice time eating lunch. And then we stopped off at this. Uh, this new record shop in in Mount Juliet that just opened up. It's called the Shop, um, and bought a couple of records. Wow, <laughs> I, it's for my first time buying any records. Uh, I have a record player now, and I have my dad's record collection. After he passed away, I uh, brought the his whole collection home with me, which was maybe between two and three hundred records. It's quite quite a good collection. Um, so yeah, this was a first for me is just buying some records. <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is kind of drying out here. So trying to stay hydrated. Um, anyway, <sighs> some things that are coming up. Later this week and in the month, um, I have a new, not me, but I'm part of a new band called Hot Hands, and it's like a jazz fusion uh, outfit trio. It's a keyboards, bass, and drums. Um, features uh, Josh Karras on keyboards, John Von Bame on bass, and myself on drums. And so we're all both collectively writing as a group and uh, as well bringing in compositions of our own to play uh, with the trio. And uh, we're also doing some some standard style covered cover music. Uh, we're doing Mahjong and Blue and Green and uh, maybe one other one that I can't think of right now. But... Um, and, and just changing them up and you know it's not a it's not like a straight ahead this is more of a jazz fusion thing so we're we're coming up with our own arrangements it's been a lot of fun We've been rehearsing now for a few months and uh, we have a show booked at Rudy's coming up um, May 26th at 11 p.m. Rudy's Jazz Room here in Nashville so we're very very excited about that and we're still just trying to we're you know we have rehearsal um you know, we're trying to decide what day of the week this week we want to rehearse, but um, 
we're still just tweaking and just refining some of the arrangements and making sure that, you know, we're all on the same page with our parts and, um, you know, whatever else musically is happening. So it's coming together really nicely though. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's going to be a great, a great time playing with that band hot hands. And we have a new Instagram page, uh, hot hands music. So it's hot underscore hands underscore music. Um, so check that out. Go, go on Instagram and like us hot hands music. And, uh, let's see. Lastly, I think lastly, I mean, this, I guess this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video. I feel, I don't feel as relaxed today as I did last week talking to you guys here on the camera. I don't know why that is, but, um, I feel like I'm having to like rush through this stuff a little bit. I don't know. Um, I set up my microphone to, to record my voice because I felt like the camera mic just wasn't cutting it as well. And like, there was a little bit of noise. Like, I don't know if that's from the camera mics or what, what, what was causing that. But I just wanted to have a little bit more control over my voice and how it sounds on the video. So then I'm gonna have to, it's a little bit more of a longer editing process, having to, you know, line up everything. And if there's any more edits, it's just like, a little more complex but um hopefully it will not be too too bad of a you know it'll be e i'll try to make it as easy as i can let's put it that way um so yeah um i guess the last thing i wanted to talk about was just some albums that i've been listening to recently um obviously i talked about the tracy lawrence live thing so I, you know i checked that out uh, I've only listened to it twice, but I'm not going to sit there and listen to it a whole bunch of times. I, I don't, you know, I, I played all that music. I don't know how many hundreds of shows I played, but a lot. So um, I don't need to listen to it again. But yeah, some new music that I've been listening to. Um, well, there's one record that I sort of stumbled on. I forget. I might have been listening to a podcast. I've been listening to a lot to... Um, Yannick Gwizdald oh, I gotta get this name right Yannick Gwizdalda I think is how you say it bass player um, he has all sorts of great content um, both on YouTube he's got a ton of records out of his, under his own name and um, he's he has a podcast Yannick Gwizdalda podcast um, and I'm finding a lot of inspiration just listening to him speak about, you know, his musical life and whatever else, what have you. Um, it's kind of, it was kind of the inspiration for me to start this vlog right here. Just listening to him talk, I thought, I, I think I could do that. So um, I think I discovered this album from listening to one of his podcasts it's anyway it's called it's a stan Getz record it's called sweet rain and grady tate is playing drums on it and just check out like if you check this album out check out how dry grady tate's drums sound on the record and how like he puts that to good use it's recorded really really well um, his cymbal sound is beautiful. He's just got a beautiful sound. Grady Tate. Oh my gosh. Um, and so that's one record I've been checking out a little bit. There's another one called, Ro uh, there's another record that's a Robin Ford record. It's called A Day in Nashville. And I've listened to that a few times now and digging on some of the grooves and, and just the overall vibe of that. Um, there's more, let's see here. Um, there's a Peter Fernandez record called Incline and that's a new, that's his newest release. And that is like a jazz fusion record all the way, like a lot of notes and way, way, way cool. Um, so check that. I've been checking that out just for like inspiration, especially like to play 
some of the stuff that I'm, you know, being asked to record with Tyler Larson, like uh, like the the artist that I was talking about earlier, um, just getting ideas and just inspiration, listening for drum certain drum tones and um, yeah, just checking that out. So um, and then funny enough, you know, the other day I kind of went down a rabbit hole a little bit with um Lionel Richie (laughs) um I've always liked Lionel Richie um but like checking out some of his earlier solo records um and some of the like the from like the early 80s like uh there's this one from 1982 it's just called Lionel Richie his his uh self-titled record and there's there's three songs on there uh one of them is called truly one of them is called you are and the other one's called endless love and they're i think they're all three of them are ballads well no you are isn't sort of a ballad but it's sort of a half ballad half but yeah um man those songs are so cool and i think it's paul lime playing drums on there on those records and then of course there's dancing on the ceiling which is 1985 um, so the song dancing on the ceiling and there's another song called love will conquer all. And I've been checking those out too. And just listening to like the drum tones and my gosh, the songwriting. I mean, I sat down at the piano and it was like record, it, it was like playing along with some of the songs and just to get a feel for like what his writing style was like and what the, how the, the harmony was made up in those songs really really cool stuff it's amazing to think like these were hits you know um and now music like that you don't even i mean music like that wouldn't even stand a chance on pop radio you know and these were big hits you know back in the day um with like master session players on them and you know, recorded in big, big, you know, expensive studios with big budgets and all of that is you know, either gone now or just different. And I don't know, I kind of, kind of, my opinion is that things were better back then. I mean, it's nice to be able to, I mean, here I am sitting in my own home studio and that, that would not have been a thing back in 1982 most likely, unless you were like really, you know, you really had your, your shiznit together. Uh, and you know, you knew you had good skills and you knew, you know, you had, maybe you came into some money. I mean, like, um, you know, you, you'd need a tape machine and, you know, it just would have been a lot harder to have a home studio. It's, I'm not saying it's impossible. And there were artists who had home studios back then. Phil Collins comes to mind. Um, but yeah um just songwriting and and i think music had way more value back then and i just i don't know something i sometimes think about and just i feel like sometimes i was born 25 years too late <laughs> um but you know every every generation has its pros and cons so um try to stay positive and and remind myself of the of the amazing stuff that we have in this generation and you know in the current musical environment that we live in um you know streaming music i mean for better or for worse we we have almost every album that's ever been recorded right at our fingertips for ten dollars a month I mean, gosh, or even on YouTube, it's free, you know, most of it. Um, and just being able to record in here is just a dream come true, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a give and a take, and you just have to remain positive. But it's just funny sometimes to to look back and, you know, you look at these albums that were made in the early 80s and... Uh, how how things have changed since then so yeah um i think that's it for this episode um 
I don't know, there's nothing else on my mind too much that I'm sharing or want to share. Um, I got some nice feedback from episode one from uh, some fellow drummers around town. Oh, you know what I didn't mention is I went to a drum clinic or, um, earlier in the week. Um, on Wednesday night, Fork's Drum Closet had a drum clinic um, that uh, uh, Jeff Sipe was the, was the clinician. Um, if you don't know Jeff Sipe, he played in um, Aquarium Rescue Unit, uh, among other uh, bands and artists he's worked with. But um, and he's kind of a kind of a like a fusion jam band drummer. This guy's got chops, man. It was what a great clinic it was. I mean, it was very different in that. Um, first of all, he played so soft. <laughs> it had to be the softest drum clinic, certainly that I've ever been to, and maybe the softest drum clinic ever in existence. Uh, it was kind of refreshing, and um, but he's got chops, and he was just talking about all sorts of memories and of various things that he's been working on. Um, he played a little four piece sonar kit and he sounded great. And, um, it wasn't like hugely attended, but there was a good amount of people there. And, um, so thanks. Shout out to forks for putting that on. It was really cool. Um, I remember learning of aquarium rescue unit, the band when I was in college and, I a friend of mine gave me these bootleg tapes to listen to and you know so I learned some of their songs off of there and I remember just being like really impressed and I remember them coming through town when I was in Ithaca going to school there um but unfortunately a Jeff wasn't playing drums it was somebody else it was um uh, a different drummer who I've also met here in town. He he used to live in town. His name is Sean. Oh gosh, I'm trying to struggle to remember his name now. Sean, Sean. It starts with an S. Um, hang on a second here. Sean O'Rourke. Sean O'Rourke, who's a freaking awesome drummer. Sean, if you're watching, sorry, I forgot your last name. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, but he was awesome, you know. And, and the other thing is they didn't have a Colonel Bruce Hampton, who was the, the main lead singer for Aquarium Rescue Unit and sort of was the reason I think that band existed. But um, anyway, um, it was... It was really cool to to see Jeff Sipe um, play after all these years of me listening to him on those bootleg recordings. Um, some of some of it was studio stuff. Some of it was live recordings. O'Teal Burbridge on bass, um, Jimmy Herring on guitar. Just amazing players. Oh my gosh! So if you're not familiar with Aquarium Rescue Unit, go go back and check that out whatever you can. I mean, there's not a, a whole ton of music on the internet from them, but there's, there's, a, there's some stuff worth checking out for sure. Um, anyway, it was a, it was a great fun environment and saw some friends there and, uh, it was a good hang. Um, ran into my old artist relations, uh, guy from, uh, who who used to be at Innovative Percussion. Uh, his name is Henry Go, and he's now uh, the head of our artist relations at KHS Music, which uh, is like the parent company to Sonar Drums and Mapex Drums. So he was there um, as the artist rep for Jeff, because Jeff's a, a, a Sonar artist. And so... Um, it was great to run into him and catch up with 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 Henry. Uh, you know, I hadn't seen him in, gosh, maybe almost a year now, um, since he left IP. Um, so yeah, it was it was great. Uh, what a great drum clinic! I 
Um, I hope Forks continues to to do these drum clinics monthly, if you know, or whatever it's been. I don't know. The last clinic I was at um, was um, Nate Smith, and he was there about a month ago. I think it was like a month ago. Maybe maybe it was two months ago. But time flies. My gosh. Anyway, um, I feel like I'm getting a little bit more comfortable talking to you guys now. I'm not in such a rush anymore. Um, maybe I should have like a like a glass of wine or whiskey before I do the next one <laughs> next week. Anyway, slow me down and just kind of let me talk a little bit and expand on some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, we're going on about 40 minutes here. So, um, yeah, that's about it, I guess. Um, hoping to do some, start to do some teaching in the area here in Nashville. Um, if any of you are interested in doing drum lessons with me, whether you're here locally in Nashville or if you want to do it online, um, I do that as well. So don't forget to, or, or don't, I mean, don't hesitate, I should say, to write to me, go to my website, or um, hit me up on social media, Instagram, at Brian Zach, or Facebook. Um, I'm pretty I, I'm pretty easy to find online, purposely, for that reason. Um, so yeah, um, I have all these ideas in my head about, and things that I've been practicing, like I said, about these independence exercises, and uh, I continue as I sit down each day, I... I could t- I, I sort of keep discovering new ideas, and what I really need to do now is sit down with my practice notebook and write out all these ideas, um, and get them down on paper before I start to forget them all. But um, in that way, you know, I can write out each each exercise in its entirety and and expand upon them that way. Um, by using different permutations of the of the root exercise and so um that's something i'm i've been meaning to do and sit down and and but it, you know that takes time it's time consuming and you know that takes like you know i guess i could probably do that while watching a ball game or something like sort of like casually watching a ball game um my beloved new york mets have been in the gutter recently so i i've been st- trying to stay away from the 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 baseball stuff cuz it's just so depressing this team is like they have like the most insane payroll like broke all these records this year and they can't freaking hit the ball so anyway that's just baseball stuff and i know you're not here for that but yeah i'm a huge baseball fan and i love the new york mets those are that's my team if you're interested. So, um, anyway, that's what's going on this week. And, um, thanks for tuning in again. Um, don't forget to like, and subscribe. Uh, don't forget if you're feeling really, really generous, look me up on patreon.com slash Brian Zach. And there's a number of tiers there that you can join me and you can help support me. And, um, there's a ton of footage and content available to you there for a mere five dollars per month. Um, drum lessons and all sorts of ideas and uh, concepts that I share, road stuff, advice, career advice, music business advice, stuff about in ears, stuff about just all the ins and outs of everyday working as a musician. Um, so if you're feeling generous, please join me there. I do appreciate it so, so much. Um, and that helps encourage me to do more content. So, yeah, um, that's about it, uh, for now. Thanks again for joining me here. And I look forward to seeing you all on next week's vlog until then. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.